One of the new features in Diablo 4 is the addition of a Paragon Boar. Pretty neat kind of extra thing they give us that we hadn't seen before. Well, maybe a little bit. It, it actually is kind of a take on the Diablo 3 legendary gem system, and they kind of moved it into this game and played upon it, which is pretty cool. Uh, so anyway, a lot of y'all have asked, hey, Hawk, can you please do a video on the Paragon board system and how your, your take on it, how it works, and all that good stuff. So since we do have a lot of new players coming into Diablo 4 and a lot of returning veteran Diablo series players coming in, just makes sense. So if you've already know everything about Paragon board, sorry for wasting your time, but let's check it out. I'm going to call this Paragon for Dummies by a Dummy. So how about y'all? You got Hog. Thanks for stopping by. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor. Hit like, hit subscribe. You won't be disappointed. All right, so listen. We got the Paragon board system, Diablo 4. Everybody knows what we're playing. Uh, it's over here in abilities. Number one overlooked thing, especially by myself. Took me like 12 days to figure this out. Or my buddy Diablo is like, Hog, click the arrow right in front of your face. This thing right here is hidden in plain sight. So if you're already using it, Congratulations, you smarter than me. That doesn't take very much. If you hadn't seen it, you're welcome. Actually, we'll expand the Paragon board system out for you. All right, we're going to look at the first board here. And we'll actually take that out. Just to show you what you're looking at. So you unlock, unlock this first board in the entire Paragon system at level 50. Okay? You can gain the Paragon points by leveling. And I guess by that you look at your experience bar right here and you see it's divided up into four sections each time you hit one of these balls right here or the end you're going to get a paragon point another way to get the paragon points is to do renown so at the very back section of the renown is your paragon points it's plus four obviously i have not done all of them because i think the renown is painful personally and i'm saving this until i get to 100 and there's really nothing left to do but the renown okay anyway that's how you get paragon points you want to try to get as much paragon points as you possibly can i know a lot of y'all are shaking your head i haven't done the renown yet that's 20 extra paragon points i really at this point need to have it but y'all it's like going to the dentist i really don't have fun Doing those little side quests and missions and whatever. In any open world game, I've always saved that to the last. That's just the way that I play. So, look. Each one of these nodes, you got three types of nodes. You got a, a, a regular node, normal node. You've got a magic node. And you've got a rare node. They all do different things. Your regular normal nodes are going to give you plus five to a stat point. So, strength, intelligence, willpower, dexterity. We all know about stat points. They relate to certain things. All you got to do is hover over them, and it'll tell you if you're not sure. Like willpower is the best one for druid. Increases skill damage. Increases healing re received. Increases overpower damage. If you're a sorceress, you're using intelligence all the time. Okay? You understand that. If you're a rogue, you're using dexterity. When you get a magic node, it's going to give you a little boost. Okay? Usually the damage, healing spirit um armor another stat so like right here we got dexterity it's actually two additional on a magic node um and then you've got your rares these are obviously the ones you want to target they've got two stats and they've also got a bonus stat as long as that requirement is met so for this prime rare node right here gives us 20 percent plus damage now keep in mind most of these nodes are additive. So I, I hate to send you to Max Roll, but they got a really good article on damage for beginners. And it talks about additive and multiplicative damage. So you're going to find both of these on the Paragon board. But most of your rare nodes are additive. So you see the plus. Just keep that in mind while you're actually kind of theory crafting and playing along with the Paragon board. Now. You want to make sure that you meet the requirements, okay? Because if you don't meet the requirements, then you don't get the extra bonus. So always keep that in mind. You'll see on each board, you have a glyph socket, okay? That's where you put your glyphs. You got two kind of glyphs. Magic glyph, rare glyph. 
best advice I can give you, don't worry about magic lifts. You won't use them. Okay, there's nothing you can do with them. They really don't give you uh, any kind of cool anything. You want to take the rare glyphs because they give you two things, a bonus and an, ad and an additional bonus. If I try to talk too fast, my tongue gets tied, and I can't get out what I'm trying to say. Now, if you played Diablo 3 and you leveled up your legendary gems, then this is a very similar system. Instead of going to Urshi after a greater rift and clicking on her and having her say, you know, do you have a gem? I have a gem, 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 gem. You get a, do a nightmare dungeon, you get a bubble at the end, and you upgrade it that way. I actually like not having to hear her every single time I talk to her. Tell me that, do you have a gem? I can upgrade your gems. Well, no shit, baby. We know you can upgrade my damn gem. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. You remember when I said a lot of these nodes are additive? And some of them are multiplicative. Well, the glyphs is the same way. You can get additive or multiplicative damage on your glyphs. So perfect example is the spirit glyph here. Uh, the additional, actually, it's got both of them. So the bonus, core skills deal plus, so additive, 7.5% critical strike damage for every five dexterity purchased in the range. Okay, we'll get to range in a second. And the additional bonus, if you meet the requirements, critical strike, increase the damage an enemy takes from you by 2% X, that's multiplicative, for 20 seconds up to 12% X, again, multiplicative. So 12% times damage. That's what you want. That's where you're going to get big numbers is getting multiplicative stuff. Okay? You just want to make sure that you're stacking them in the right places. I have a, a, a video on damage buckets and stuff like that. If you don't understand about damage buckets, that explains it over there, and you can start stacking up your stuff, okay? Now, you see the requirements here, dexterity. Each one of these glyphs has a requirement. So this one here, earth and sky, it's willpower. This one's dexterity. This one's intelligence. Um, I don't know if I've seen a strength uh, glyph drop yet everything that i've found is intelligence willpower and um, dexterity so let me know in the comments below if you have found a strength glyph on your class i'm only playing druid right now so i can't tell you if there's a strength a strength glyph or not but regardless now you see this radius size i said radius a minute ago and then you have levels uh, 15 is going to give you the max radius. That's really what you're concerned about. Okay. Radius. So if we take, let's see, yeah, this level four, we're going to drop it in there. You see the red out here. That's your radius. That means this glyph is affecting all of these nodes within this radius. Okay. So we're, we're affecting this. Every five intelligence purchased within range, you deal plus 3.2% poison damage, okay? Now, I just want to show you about the range. Now, if we take this out, right-click on it to take it out, and let's say we put in a... Let me use this one as an example for you. So here's our regular range, okay? I take another one that's a 15 you see the range comes out one more step and that's why you have the nightmare dungeons is to actually get this radius out because some of these areas especially once you get later on in the board you need a 15 glyph to be able to use that okay I'll show you that here in a minute highly recommend this first board is pretty universal Highly recommend you go to the right and take your damage nodes and then connect. But number one most important glyph to me is exploit. It's got a dexterity requirement. You can sync it in here and it gives you vulnerability. So it's very important that you make everything vulnerable and you want to make sure that you get the requirements on this. But it also leads us into how to figure out where you're going to put certain glyphs. Okay, and how you figure that out, we're going to use our advanced in-game board right here. So, 
I want to take this glyph, okay? A, because there's two rares right here, and I could potentially affect two rare nodes with one glyph, and there's a bunch of other magics around it, okay? So I've decided this is what I want to pick. How do you decide what glyph to put in there? Well, first things first, you got to make sure the area that you're choosing can support that glyph. And what I mean is, like I said, requirements. Okay, requirements here. Let's see, I want my 15. Dexterity. Do I have enough dexterity within the range of this particular glyph to put it here? So you got two decisions really to make. Which board you want to put, which glyph you want to, which socket you want to use that affects what nodes. And then you got to choose what glyph is appropriate, not only for the requirements, but for the, uh, the bonus and the additional bonus that it grants. Okay. It's kind of a lot of decision making and you're going to be refunding as you get used to this and it's going to get expensive. It's just, that's. That's the bare bones problem is it gets expensive, not to sugarcoat it for y'all. It's expensive to mess with a Paragon board, so keep that. Everything in the game's expensive. Keep that in mind. Okay, so before we choose, we're going to say, now this is the one I want because it's going to help my core skills out and it's going to give me critical strike damage and make enemies take more damage from me. Okay, cool. I need dexterity. Well, you know there's a certain radius size. Okay, so this is the problem I ran into before. Let's look at the radius size. This is your normal non-level 15 radius size. Okay, well, I know I need dexterity to activate this particular glyph. So let's see, do I have enough dexterity? So you really just want to look and see, okay, we got intelligence, intelligence, willpower, willpower, willpower. One dexterity, so that's five, and then we've got seven dexterity, so that's what, 12, and then we've got five, so that's 17. You need 25, so you don't have enough at this point with a non-level 15 glyph to even get an additional bonus here. So, okay, we're going to put a level 15 glyph in there. Now we've stepped out one size, now we can come out and take dexterity 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 and we've got 29 out of 25 pretty cool so now we've got 40 plus 43.6 percent critical strike damage with core skills this particular build that i'm using relies on a core skill okay and we've got critical strikes increase the damage an enemy takes from you by two percent up for uh 20 seconds up to 12 percent those are multipliers so Two, two types of bonuses. We're also affecting all of these extra nodes. So we're getting shape-shifting damage. We're getting extra here from this node. We're getting a lot. Okay? You get the picture. We're affecting all of these. So that's the best way to pick what can actually work if you're trying to level up. Let's say you're a 50. That's the way I, that's why I tell you to put vulnerability in here first, because if you're looking at this, you say, okay, dexterity, 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 dexterity. You have enough just right here to use a dexterity based glyph, which just so happens to be exploit. So the second you put it in there and invest the skill points or the stat points, paragon points, whatever, there it is unlocked for you to use. So that's the basics of selection. I wish I could tell you the best way to path. Um, all you can do is play with it and preview. Okay. So you can always click on, I guess I should talk about this. Connecting a board. Once you reach the top here, you're going to see this board attachment gate. You have to actually click on this one to activate it. And then you can attach a board. So it's going to actually let you preview the board. So let's look over here at this one. You say it says preview board selection. And you can actually preview this whenever you want to. You don't just necessarily have to have it activated to preview. Once you hit preview, it's going to show you all of the available boards that you can put. So basically whatever you ain't used. So you can go through. It's going to tell you what legendary nodes you have. 
and all the rare nodes that you have on there. So if you have a specific need in your build, let's say you have a problem with spirit, you can look through these boards and see if there's some way to regain spirit, okay? Um, for this one, let's say you're a storm wolf and you want to take Thunderstroke, okay? So you can actually click preview on the board. It will change your view to the preview mode. And then you can actually rotate these Paragon boards to suit how you want. So let's say you, you want to get this glyph right here. And you want a real short path to the glyph. Well, you rotate it like this. So you can come right off this board, hit the glyph. If you put the glyph on the other side. Okay, I want to hit this legendary node here. Which, highly recommend you always hit legendary nodes. You need to plan around nodes because they are almost always multipliers. This one right here. Storm skills deal 30%. X, so multiplicative, increased critical strike damage against vulnerable or mobilized enemies. Well, this bottom, the first board we did, the one on the bottom, everything's vulnerable every time you deal damage to it, okay? So, obviously you want that. But that's tricky about choosing your path then. And that's why I said a minute ago you might have to reset a few times or use an offline or an online planner. I don't know why I said offline. There's a bunch of D4, D4 planners one. Uh, there's a couple other ones. Join our Discord. Links in the description below for the House of Hog. We got a bunch of build guide and resources and stuff like that. Links to all these pa all these pages and a bunch of knowledgeable players that can help you out if you've got questions, stuff like that. But highly recommend looking at that if you don't have a lot of gold to do this and play with it. The only main difference is... You can actually really see what you're looking at pretty quick in game so kind of use both tools i hate that i have to send you to a, a third party site to have a tool but there's no real besides looking at things like this in plan mode you can't spend imaginary points and see what it does or anything like that okay so once you figure out how you want to path everything got all that settled then you can attach the board. Okay, pretty pretty straightforward there. You can chain as many of them together as you possibly can. That is totally up to you. You could chain every single board, which it, it won't do you any good. Because, I mean, I'm not a storm wolf right now. I don't need this. I'm not an earth bear. I'm in wolf form. So this one right here really doesn't do much for me. Um, this is a wear bear form one. This one doesn't do anything for me. I mean, sometimes you might want to come pick up little things here and there, poison damage or stuff, but that's just up to you. That's how, however you plan it. Just keep in mind, you've got a lot of pathing to do. And I'm talking about a lot of pathing. There's a lot of decision making that goes on. So like heightened malice here, while there are three or more poison enemies nearby, you deal 45% increased damage. Like there's all kinds of stuff that you can try to stack together to achieve more damage, more defense, more survivability, more resistances, whatever it is that you need for your particular build. Okay? I hope this didn't overload you too much, but that's the basics of the board. And the best thing that I can tell you is just to play with it. Yes, it's very expensive. Okay, so like I said, use a tool online, but this is how I play with it. And I've made many, many mistakes in the game already. And it's nothing just a little bit of farming won't recover from. Really ain't no thing. So, Anyway, appreciate y'all. If you like the content, hit like, hit subscribe. We've got more Diablo stuff. We plan on playing the game for a long time as long as they continue to support the game. And like I said before, we have a badass Discord. Links in the description below for that. The House of Hog. We ain't mild, we wild, baby. I'm also streaming on Twitch right now for the Support Your Streamer program. You can still come over there and get your mount and get all that good stuff. It's uh, twitch.tv forward slash hog underscore gaming so come over there have a good time uh, we usually stream every evening at 8 eastern time so might be a few minutes late but that's the new schedule now 8 eastern on twitch a lot of y'all are asking why we've been streaming on youtube uh, the new rules with twitch do not allow us to multi-stream so um, we're working around trying to figure out 
we should continue doing that or just go to YouTube and go to kick or whatever. So if you have any feedback on that stuff, let me know in the comments below. A uh, big shout out. Appreciate them for sponsoring the channel and uh, make sure to hit like and subscribe. We'll see y'all next time.